reaction and review. Tonight, guys, I'm checking out a horror film from 2000. That movie is Final Destination. Now, I'd like to say before I even get started that um, you, you guys are going to be seeing a lot of this franchise this month because uh, not only did somebody send in the first four in this uh, little uh, Blu-ray four-pack, somebody else sent in Final Destination 5. So... I'm sort of locked in for the whole month. I get to cover the entire franchise. Yay. Now, going into the first film, I don't really know a whole lot about it. I do vaguely remember the ads for these movies. It has something to do with a bunch of people uh, cheating fucking death in some way, shape, or form. And death apparently is a vengeful, childish spirit who absolutely has to has to fucking get his kills and comes up with uh, goofy and oftentimes stupid ways of killing them at least that's what i've been told by the people who watch this people who like it and watch this even even say that a lot of the deaths are kind of stupid but i'm really curious and now i finally get my chance i have no clue if this movie is any good at all the only way i'm gonna find out though is if i shut up and i push play and i'm gonna do that right now. So, without further ado, it's time to kick back, relax, and check out Final Destination. So, are they going to explain exactly why the plane fucking, you know, exploded? 30 seconds after, you know, takeoff? Because there was literally, like, no fucking warning there. And, guys, I am not exaggerating. The plane exploded 30 seconds after takeoff. The fuck happened? I've never seen a plane explode like that that soon after takeoff. Usually, guys, you're, like, in the air a bit before something really tragic fucking happens, let alone a random explosion out of nowhere. Plus, now we know who we have to follow for the rest of the film. And I kind of hope that death takes every single one of them and takes them all quickly, because all of them are shallow and irritating as shit. So that was our first kill. That was kind of stupid. Like, that really was just way too fucking much buildup for just for just a simple hanging. It really was, guys. It was kind of built up. It was kind of sort of... It was kind of sort of contrived and stupid. And there's no logical way that the cord could have gotten around his neck in the first place. But, oh well. Uh, one down... Hopefully everybody else will be dead by the end of this film, because so far, again, not a single one of them is worth fucking caring about. I certainly hope that the other deaths are at least better than that one. Well, guys, good news. The second death came completely out of left field. Kind of. I mean, I totally, totally understand that they kind of sort of... that they kind of sort of had foreshadowed the bus, but still, at least its usage was completely, completely, un it was completely unexpected, so at least the film's kills are stepping up. At least that's a positive. So she really doesn't notice the massive crack in her fucking coffee, coffee mug that's dripped vodka all over the floor and all over her computer monitor. Oh, and now the vodka's dripping into the computer monitor. Yeah. Um, the very fact that she didn't notice that massive crack form and didn't see the huge dollops of vodka dripping out, this stupid bitch deserves to fucking die, and goddammit, I'm gonna smile when she fucking does. Oh, almost. So close. Oh, wait! Yes! Yes, it got her! <laughs> Serves you fucking right. Yes! And that's what? Kill number four? That one, they kind of sort of, they kind of sort of foreshadowed it a little bit too much and kind of took away a whole lot of the shock. At least, honestly, guys, when the bus fucking kill happened, that, that sucker just came. And they kind of sort of foreshadowed it slightly. That one there, they fucking, they honestly didn't foreshadow it as much as telegraph it. And it, t and it took a whole lot of the sting out of it, man. But hey, at least now we're one step closer to hopefully a happy ending with all of them dead. So, at least that's a positive. You know, guys, what was sort of cool at the start of this movie? What was sort of cool at the start of this movie is when every kill seemed incredibly, incredibly coincidental. You know, where it actually looked like some kind of like a freak accident kind of thing. 
But right now, guys, for the past few minutes, uh, Death, Destiny, the Reaper, Fate, whatever the fuck you want to call the ominous presence that is, that, that is stalking our survivors, has tried desperately for the past few minutes to kill this one character. It has stopped being coincidental. It stopped being cute. Now it's just trying way too fucking hard. And because it's trying that fucking hard, it's taking all the tension out of this scene. Not only that, I'm struggling to stay awake because this movie is a little bit dull. With all of its... Now, now guys, now with, now with all of its flash and all this other shit, the movie is boring as fuck. And I'm just thinking, my god, I've got four, I've got four more of these fuckers I, ha I have to watch the, this month. This month is gonna suck, man. Well, guys, that was Final Destination. <sighs> that was in, that was incredibly boring, guys. <laughs> I'm 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 just gonna put that out there right now. This movie was dull as shit. But um, let me see if I can try to cover this. The writing. So, because this was the first film in the series, they're trying to set all of the rules about how people die and how does fate and destiny work in the grand scheme of the final fucking Destination series, uh, things seem a little bit floaty. And when I say that, I mean as they're trying to figure out exactly how does death pick out its next target amongst those who've cheated, who's, who've cheated death, uh... They throw out, like, all of these different theories and rumors, and none of them are ever completely confirmed. So it's like, well, it's either in the order that you would have died on the plane, or it'll skip you and it'll get back to you later if somebody at some point somehow intervened and saved your life. Uh, at which point then they move on to the next person on the list. Apparently, death has just, like, a checklist. And he has to hit everything. And if something happens, he'll just skip it and then he'll get them later. It just, it sounds kind of stupid. And, you know, they play up that. They play up that it could be anybody at any time for whatever reason. They play up that it's just that, that, that there actually is no real plan or checklist. It's just that when you happen to cheat, you know, death, death has to get his. You know, it's just whatever the fuck the deal was. It seemed to change from scene to scene, and I'm going to tell you guys, it, it would have been great if all these people were just randomly dying of weird shit. I kind of sort of liked the one who got hit by the bus. That one, to me, felt like the most natural thing, where she basically just sort of stumble-fucked her way into, into the path of an oncoming bus and was splattered, and was splattered against all those who, who were looking on. You know, that was sort of cool. The one who had the big crack in their coffee mug is literally pouring vodka out as they're walking from the kitchen to what I'm going to assume was the living room, is dribbling vodka as it's pouring out of that crack all over everything, which then causes the computer to explode, uh, causes a few other things, things to happen. All of a sudden, then, the trail of vodka on the ground essentially then just starts to catch fire. It gets back, it gets back over to the sink, and everything fucking explodes, and she's down, and she's got, like, a neck wound. She reaches up for a towel. She pulls down the towel, and, of course, it was on top of the butcher block, so then all of the knives fall, and then a chair falls, and presses that last knife in. That kind of shit? That kind of long, drawn-out, pointless, stupid crap? No. That felt so tiresome. Similar, honestly, to the hanging and to the attempted, to the attempted and failed electrocution kill. Um, all of those were just, they literally just felt like somebody was, somebody just lost all fucking faith in the film, like, I don't know, he somehow, he somehow gets hanged in the bathtub by a cord, and he's not able to stand up because there's shampoo inside the tub, and his feet are slipping, so he just strangles. Yeah, no, no, that, that one there could almost have worked if it wasn't for the fact that the water, the water, the water puddle he slipped on immediately recessed back into the toilet afterwards, which was, a, which was honestly an okay effect, but it still didn't show, it, it, it didn't mean much to me. I really found, guys, a lot of these kills to be, to be kind of empty because there was way too much setup. Okay, and what I mean by that is, 
when you're doing these sorts of films where people are running from some kind of a killer, whether it be a fucking paranormal killer or just a psycho slasher, it helps if you don't telegraph everything that badly, or you make everything just sort of fall under just that kind of stupid, dumb luck. Guys, I'm a fan of Rube Goldberg devices, but when, but when the final kill in this film is an incredibly stupid one, I take a little bit of offense. It, it shouldn't have been that much of a task to cause a fucking neon, ne to cause a neon sign to fall and crush somebody. Or we'll just swing it and slam into somebody. Guys, you know, the kills here just didn't feel, just didn't feel decent to me. You know, and this right here is one of those films that it prides itself on its kills. The kills are the only reason to fucking watch. Because that is the whole plot, is that death is hunting these people because they somehow, some way, were able to cheat cheat destiny as if destiny can ever be properly cheated so you're waiting to watch all of these people kick off and you know in all honesty at that point you have to put a ton of effort into your kills and they didn't a lot of these felt so forced and so tiresome guys i'm going to tell you right now when there is a live power line and it is all but chasing a character around the backyard for all of like four or five minutes that honestly is when you know that you don't care anymore because you're not focusing on the kill you're focusing on the chase and when it's a and when it's a human being being chased by a sentient power line it's not interesting at least in this case it wasn't fucking interesting so guys the one thing that this whole film was sort of priding itself on was shit i'm certainly hoping that it's better in the sequels good god i hope so but the kills here were shit, and since that is the primary selling point of this film, it fails miserably. Now, I will say that 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 because the movie is so absolutely like laser focused on the kills, it's totally fine that every single character is a totally worthless douche because at that point you want to see them die. You revel in them dying. As stupid as the vodka laptop burning knife kill was, you know what? Uh, the very fact that the, the very fact that we had a dumb motherfucker who didn't see all that vodka, tri you know, like, you know, like pouring out of that cup, that's fine. I was more than happy to see her fucking die. The one who got hit by the bus, more than happy to see her die. The one who got beheaded by a chunk of metal, more than happy to see that dumb son of a bitch die. I was so happy when every single one of these characters kicked off because nothing of value was lost. I was happy to see these worthless tools taken out. No matter how stupid the kill was, at least it was kind of cool. Now, um, one other thing I want to talk about involving writing... Uh, has to do with something that they were sort of teasing was going to be kind of sort of a running running theme, but it wasn't, was John Denver. John Denver. Uh, apparently, at some point, way early on in the film, they wanted to make they wanted to make hearing John John Denver music like a sign that you were going to die. But they didn't cash in on it with every single kill, and so it just sort of felt like some worthless thing that was there just to kind of, to sort of, you know, announce only a small number of the kills. And the whole thing started because our main character, Alex, was sitting, was sitting in, was sitting in the airport bathroom, and all of a sudden Rocky Mountain High starts playing, and he's like, Duh, there was a song by John fucking Denver, and he died in a plane, plane crash. Oh my god, it, it, and it is a sign that the plane is going to crash. Thank you. Thank you for absolutely spelling it out for everybody. You could have made that. You could have made the whole thing with John Denver, as long as you cashed in on it on every single kill. A, you could have you, you could have made it a viewer, a viewer bonus, so that way the people who knew about John Denver's death in a plane in a fucking plane crash could have easily put two and two together but also if you would have played at least a piece of john denver music with every single kill it would have then told you a kill is coming and there were instances with every kill that we could have heard something there are there were always instances of radios or cars or anything else present where you could have heard a john denver song blasting 
and they didn't. They completely botched it on a couple of... Guys, the final fucking kill is predicated by somebody in a French cafe singing a French cover of Rocky Mountain High. At least that worked. At least that's still showing you that the fucking death is coming. They were building up on a theme, and they didn't bother to go through with it because they were too fucking lazy to try to insert the song into every single kill. That would actually have been a rather interesting theme. It would probably have been a hell of a lot better if dipshit wasn't sitting in the bathroom, dude, John Denver died in a plane crash. That absolutely kneecapped the whole thing from the very start, but it still would have been a sort of interesting con fucking concept if they would have played, played with it all the way to the end of the fucking film. Oh my god, guys, writing here is a fucking mess, and I understand, I was not expecting much. I was, I was just, I was just expecting a stupid movie where morons get killed off, and yeah, sure, I got that. However, the kills were not interesting enough, and the whole thing just felt like a massive fuck-off waste. Now, as much as I could rail on, on the writing, oh my fuck, I could continue to rail on that fucking writing. I will say that the acting here is it. The acting here is at least decent. Fuck, guys. I honestly will go as far as to say that the acting is good. It is, guys. The acting here is actually incredibly good, considering the fact that we're working with a cheesy teen fucking horror film. Normally, nobody tries in those. But here, our entire cast tried. Even people, even people such as Tony Todd, who's in there for all of one scene. He steals the fucking show in that one scene. It worked really fucking well. So everybody here turned in a magnificent showing in terms of acting. Unfortunately, you can have you can have a bunch of actors turning in top shelf a fucking list performances. All of that means nothing when your writing is this shit. It, I mean, guys, that honestly is just mountains of wasted talent to try to bring life to something that is so stupid it doesn't deserve any life. But that, but that, guys, is sort of the thing. I am going to praise the actors, at least the actors tried, and that's awesome. I have nothing but the utmost respect for this entire cast for actually giving some effort and not phoning it in. So we do have that. Special effects, I can also praise the special effects. The special effects in this movie are awesome. I'm talking every single kill, every every single piece, every single piece of gore, and pyrotechnics and CG. Everything that's in this film in terms of special effects are awesome. Okay? At least awesome by 2000 standards when the movie came out, it was some top line shit. Unfortunately, once more, I do have I do have to say you can have the best special effects in the fucking world. It's not going to stop the fact that your writing is shit. Okay, I I'm going I'm going to try to stop harping on that. I really have to try to stop harping on that. But guys, you totally have to understand that damn near everything else in this movie is great, and it's all brought down by writing that is this blitheringly incompetent. Guys, our sound mix here is good. Our camera work is fine. Our lighting is awesome. Our set design is great. You know, everything here is good. Our sound, our fucking soundtrack is good. I never thought I'd say that considering the fact that I'm not a big fan of John fucking Denver and we get a bit of, and we get a bit of John Denver in here, but at least they pick John Denver songs that aren't crap. So I have to give them that. And everything that isn't John, John Denver is at least halfway decent. So I can also praise the soundtrack. I can praise the score for being good. Unfortunately, guys, once more, if you have all of this stuff and it works out so well, but your writing is absolute garbage. Your whole film is for fucking naught, man. There's nothing there. There's literally no reason to tune into this thing outside of the deaths. And I know people have already put every single death from this movie, as well as from all the sequels, onto YouTube. So I can tell you right now, you can save yourself the, what the fuck was it, 98 minutes? 98 minutes. You can save yourself the 98 minutes. Go onto YouTube, look up all of the Final Destination 1 kills. Ta-da! There, there, guys. You've seen everything that has to be seen. Everything that's worth seeing. And even then, some of that is not that good. Because, guys, I'm going to tell you, I am a stickler for writing. Those of you who've been following my series long enough know, I 
absolutely adhere to the fact that without with that without decent writing your film is shit and final destination is a prime example of why you need at least decent fucking writing when your writing is this lazy when your writing is this shit Everything else, no matter how good it is, is going to bring the whole thing tumbling down and it's going to be a huge, massive failure. So, can I recommend Final Final Destination? No. no I'm, I'm certainly hoping for the next three here to be decent. Fuck, I'm also hoping for the fifth one to, to, be, to be good. But so far, this is not shaping up to be, to be a very decent month, guys. If this movie is anything to fucking go by... I can guarantee you that about half of this month is going to be a painful experience. But I'm going to have to find out more about that as the month goes on. Now, Final Destination came off the Amazon wish list. The person who sent it in was a friend of mine, Stu. You can find his YouTube channel at youtube.com slash user slash the vodka haze. Swing over there, guys. Check out everything he has. Stu, I thank you. I was really curious about... This movie, shit, I was curious about this whole franchise. The fact that you bought this thing, which gives me the first four movies, that is that is amazing. And now I finally have my chance to watch them. Unfortunately, the first one is kind of shit, but I still have hopes on two, three, and four, so we'll just have to see how all of those go once more. That is youtube.com slash user slash the vodka haze. Guys, please swing over there and check out everything that Stu has. I really can't think of what he all has on his channel right now. My brain's completely blank right now. But anyway, guys, um, wow. Again, I didn't, I didn't have high hopes going into this. The movie couldn't even match my slightly low expectations. But that's because, again, as good as everything is, the writing kills it. Which is kind of fitting, considering the fact that this film cares only about its kills, and even those are lazily written. Anyway, guys, I am going to go find something else, something else to watch. I'm right now sort of scanning over my Blu-ray collection here. You know what? Gro you know, guys, gro I have not watched my copy of Grotesque since I last fucking reviewed it, I believe. I'm going to go and give that thing another another watch. It It has to be better than this. In fact, I do have fond memories of that film. I'm going to go watch that. Anyway, guys, with that, we come to the close of another reaction and review. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, take care, and I will see you all in the near future. Peace.